Barakata Yahweh, Barakata Yahweshai, by Shem Braka Kodash, Barakatum. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, glory, and infinite honors to Yahweh by Shem Yahweshai. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule and teach well. And peace and salutations to Yahakim out there pushing this word in truth and sincerity to the four corners of the globe. May you brothers endure until the end. This is the brother Raya with another video, and I'm going to start it off with Revelation chapter 17, verse 16. And the ten horns, which is speaking of the European Union, more specifically the first ten common markets of the European Economic Community, which was the name of the EU before it became the EU, which thou sawest upon the beast, NATO, these shall hate the whore, the United States of America, which is biblically known as Babylon the Great, and spiritual Sodom in Egypt, besides being known as this whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire, that fire being those nuclear missiles, because in the foreseeable future there will be a nuclear armed World War III, which will kick off with that battle in the Valley of Jehoshaphat, or that War of Armageddon in the Middle Eastern region. And while the U.S.'s allies will fight with her for a time, eventually they're going to turn against her and ally themselves with Russia, and they're all together going to shoot their nuclear missiles onto the United States, turning it into the biblical lake of fire from sea to shining sea, a desolate wasteland. And if you have the eyes to see, you can see the beginning stages of these ten horns beginning to hate the whore. Earlier this week, you had the G7 meeting where all these uh, major powers get together to discuss current events. And while things seem cordial on the surface, when you really look at it, all these nations were commenting negatively on the United States that all the problems in the world stem from U.S. adventurism. And I've got two articles to further prove how these ten horns are beginning to hate the whore. One article dealing with France, which is one of the first ten common markets of the European economic community. And another article dealing with Germany, another of the first ten common markets of the European economic community, which was uh, known as West Germany back then, but now is just Germany proper. And my first article is on RT.com titled, End of Western Hegemony. Why does Macron want Russia at Europe's side? Because again, Russia is going to be that main nation they're going to ally themselves with to go against the United States, that great whore. French President Emmanuel Macron has warned Western nations, those ten horns, against the strategic mistake of alienating Russia. But in doing so, he seeks a bigger role for himself in international politics. We are living in the end of Western hegemony, and not just the end of Western hegemony, but the end of Edomite, or so-called white people's hegemony. Macron told diplomats on Tuesday, after hosting the G7 meeting in the city of Biarritz on France's Atlantic coast over the weekend, he named the rise of Beijing and Moscow as signs of a shift on the world scene. Pushing Russia away from Europe is a profound strategic mistake. President Macron went further, even saying that the main problem in the world is no longer Russia, but instead the United States, that great whore that sits upon many waters. Pushing Moscow into Beijing's arms, we're either pushing Russia into isolation, which increases tensions, or to ally itself with other major powers like China, which would not be in our interest, Macron said calling for the rethinking of relations with Moscow. Otherwise, Europe will be stuck with being a theater for strategic struggle between the U.S. and Russia. France has long feared of a Russian-China alliance, believing believes Evgeny Asipov, a senior fellow at the Institute of General History of the Russian Academy of Sciences, what has changed recently is the nature of relations between Moscow and Paris. Macron's rhetoric has somewhat softened in recent months, to the point that during talks with Russian President Vladimir Putin last week, he vowed to do his best to rebuild trust between Russia and the EU. The ties have stabilized over the past two years, Azapov, a PhD in history, believes. Moscow and Paris openly state their differences yet they are now ready to gradually promote dialogue and move forward towards full normalization of relations, he said. He even called Russia a deeply European country with a future tied with the rest of Europe. 
All that does not necessarily mean Macron's actions are driven by a pure desire to see Russia return to the family. It might be more about the balance of power, according to Azapov. France is itself very active when it comes to relations with China, the historian explained. What Macron cares about is that neither China nor Russia or the U.S. become too powerful too soon, and an alliance between Moscow and Beijing is, the, is most likely to tip the scales, but first and foremost, this is all through the will of Yahawubai Shimiawashai to bring these major prophecies to their fulfillment. New to Gaulle? However, there might be more to Macron's call for rapprochement with Moscow. He might be seeking ways to cement his position as a European leader, something he has arguably been craving since he took office. Two years ago, it was just a dream. Now it is within reach, Azapov said, with German Chancellor Angela Merkel facing mounting pressure at home and the UK's authority in Europe being shaken by Brexit. France might yet emerge as the most stable and the most powerful, for that matter, of the European political grandees. And this goes to Joel chapter 3 around the 10th verse, and the weak shall say I am strong, because for the longest time France was looked at as uh, the weakest nation among uh, the European Union. They're always kind of a joke, but this just goes to show how quickly things can turn on a dime. Now they're talking about France possibly being the most stable and most powerful of the European political grandees. As he strives for this desired status, Macron seems to be trying to mimic France's iconic leader, Charles de Gaulle, who sought to keep the balance between the West and the Socialist Bloc in the 1960s. Now Macron wants France to become a bridge between the West and Russia, Azapov said. His role is unlikely to be limited to mediation, though. Macron apparently wants to take the lead in shaping the West's, or at least Europe's, policies and he has already taken it upon himself to point out their mistakes. The world order is being shaken like never before because we're living in the last seconds of these last days. We're living in the last rulership of the heathen before the Israelites, the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans come back into power for eternity. It's being shaken because of errors made by the West in certain crises, but also by the choices made by the United States in the past few years and not just by the current administration. These choices are impacting the conflicts in the Middle East and elsewhere, making it necessary to rethink military and diplomatic strategies, the president noted. The Ten Horns see that it's detrimental to their own best interests to follow after the best interests of the whore. These European Edomites are always the ones feeling blowback from U.S. adventurism abroad. You've got the refugee crisis in Europe, which is a result from U.S. and NATO wars in Libya and Syria. And now with the U.S. leaving the INF, or the Intermediate Nuclear Forces Treaty, these European Edomites know that they're going to be on the front lines of an upcoming nuclear conflict between the U.S. and Russia. So now they're allying themselves with old rivals to get themselves in the best position to save their own ass. I'm going to go to my second article on antiwar.com titled, U.S.-Germany Ties Are Fragile, Crumbling on Split Priorities, Ambassador Grinnell Fosters Resentment in Germany, another example of these tin horns beginning to hate the whore. U.S. relationships with several nations have faced challenges with the major priority changes of President Trump. Germany is no exception, and what was long one of the closest relationships in the West is now fragile and steadily worsening. There are a number of reasons why. Germany's economic power has made it a target for Trump's trade wars, and the U.S. is also angry with Germany doing business with Russia in regards to the Nord Stream 2 gas pipeline. The Trump hostility to the European Union has also put it at odds with Germany and its neighbors, and a big reason is that Trump and German Chancellor Angela Merkel really don't communicate that much. U.S. Ambassador Richard Grinnell hasn't helped matters, spurning traditional events the German government puts on for U.S. envoys and feeling himself entitled to constantly issue policy demands and threaten repercussions if Germany doesn't comply. Grinnell has made himself a lot of enemies as a result, and many see it as just typical of the way the Trump administration generally behaves around its traditional allies. 
This once again adds to the communication problem, as ideally his job would be to keep the lines open between the two countries, and he's broadly not doing that. This is Daniel chapter 7, I'm going to start at verse 19. Then I would know the truth of the fourth beast, that reincarnated Roman Empire, that EU-NATO alliance which the U.S. is a part of, that beast with the ten horns that the whore rides upon, which was diverse from all the others, exceeding dreadful, whose teeth were of iron and his nails of brass, which devoured, break in pieces, and stamped the residue with his feet. Verse 20, And the ten horns, the EU, that were in his head, and of the other which came up, that little horn, the United States, that whore, and before whom three fell, which is speaking of uh, France, Britain, and Spain, which were the main players in the New World before the U.S. completely took over, even of that horn that had great eyes and a mouth that spake very great things, such as spreading de democracy across the planet, spreading feminism, spreading homosexuality and transgenderism, and uh, destroying nations if they don't follow after its dictates and allow the U.S. to rape that country of its resources, whose look was more stout than his fellows, and when we go down to that word stout in the Strong's, it's Strong's H, 7229, Rav, 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 great, great, figurative of power, captain, chief, in the Strong's definition, captain, chief, great, lord, master, stout, and when you look at this uh, NATO EU system, the US is at the top of it. That's why it's the whore that rides upon the beast. And when we go to the Jacinius' Hebrew child lexicon, it says great in Daniel chapter two and 10, 31, 35, 45, to speak great things, i.e. to speak proudly, impiously. What do we just read? U.S. Ambassador Richard Grinnell hasn't helped matters, spurning traditional events the German governments put on for U.S. envoys and feeling himself entitled or stout or proud to constantly issue policy demands and threaten repercussions if Germany doesn't comply. The U.S. is the worst kind of bully. Not only does he bully the weak, but also his best friends. So that's why these horns aren't going to feel bad turning against this whore when they get the opportunity to do so. And like with all bullies, there's always a bigger, badder bully on the block. And this bigger, badder bully is about to make his move with Russia on the one hand, but first and foremost, Yahawashai HaMashiach, whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, is going to crack those clouds, save his elect, and put the final nail in the coffin of Esau Edom's rulership. This is Obadiah 1 verse 7. All the men of thy confederacy, or your allies, have brought thee even to the border. The men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee and prevailed against thee. They that eat thy bread have laid a wound under thee. There is none understanding in him. And we can see an example of this with these articles I read from, especially that first article on RT.com with France pivoting towards an alliance with Russia. That's an example of the men of thy confederacy that were at peace with thee, deceiving thee and laying a wound under thee. And as I said at the beginning of the video, while the US's allies are gonna go to war with it in that battle of the Valley of Jehoshaphat or that war of Armageddon in the Middle East, eventually they're gonna turn against the US and ally themselves with Russia. This is Jeremiah 50 verse nine. For lo, I will raise and cause to come up against Babylon, the United States, that virgin daughter of Babylon, Babylon the Great, that whore that rides upon many waters, and the beast, an assembly of great nations from the North Country, Russia, because what's north of the United States and Canada across the Arctic Ocean, Russia, and besides being known as the North Country, Russia is also known as Gog in Ezekiel 38 and the Medes in the scriptures, and that assembly of great nations is not only Russia's allies, such as China, Iran, and North Korea, but also the allies of the US, such as Britain, France, Germany, Japan, South Korea, Saudi Arabia, etc., etc., who are going to turn against it. 
the men of thy confederacy have deceived thee and laid that wound under thee, and they shall set themselves in array against her, from thence she shall be taken, their arrows shall be as of a mighty expert man, none shall return in vain, and those arrows are speaking of those nuclear tipped ICBMs, because what you have to remember is that when the prophets saw these visions thousands of years ago, they didn't know what a nuclear missile was, so they had to describe it the best way they could with what they knew at the time, weapons of war, such as spears, arrows, swords, you name it. This is Isaiah 13, I'm going to read verse 17 through 20, because this is the end game. Behold, I will stir up the Medes against them, that north country, Russia, with that assembly of great nations, which shall not regard silver, and as for gold, they shall not delight in it. No peace treaties or uh, peace talks are gonna av is going to avert Russia from going against the U.S. and shooting their nuclear missiles onto it. Verse 18, their bows also shall dash the young men to pieces, those bows being the launchers for these missiles, and they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb, their eyes shall not spare children. And Babylon, the United States, again, that whore, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldees' excellency, shall be as when the Most High overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. And how was ancient Sodom and Gomorrah overthrown? With fire and brimstone from the sky. And this modern-day Sodom and Gomorrah is going to be overthrown by that modern fire and brimstone from the sky, those nuclear-tipped ICBMs. It shall never be inhabited, neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation, neither shall the Arabian pitch tent there, neither shall the shepherds make their fold there. After these 200 million nuclear missiles, as well as the laser beams from the chariot of the Most High, which people ignorantly refer to as so-called UFOs hit the United States, it's going to destroy it from sea to shining sea, turning it into that biblical lake of fire and then an uninhabitable wasteland afterwards, which is only going to stand as a memorial as to what a wicked kingdom looks like and how not to govern the world. So with this video, I hope you sincere Akim are edified. Just keep pushing this word. We're almost out of this final wicked captivity of Esau Edom's. And with that, I'm going to say a Baba Bol, Kwame Asharala. Till next time. Shalom.